So a common question I get is, when do you use inbuilt Java HTTP libraries instead of rest assured? And sometimes that's a hard question to answer. But since I've just written a whole bunch of code that uses the inbuilt Java HTTP libraries, I thought it'd be useful to look at some of that code and say, this is why I use it. Now the code that I've written is very simple. Basically I have a, a test app. I'm using Spark as the embedded web server. So the test starts up Spark as the embedded web server. So it's running on local host. Then it checks to make sure the server is running, waits for the server to be running. Then it starts making some simple HTTP requests. So I have a very, very constrained set of uh, HTTP use cases that I'm doing. Now the HTTP URL connection is pretty good. It can handle a lot of different use cases. And that the, as, what you find is as you use it, you build up an abstraction layer on top of that library to make things easier. So you can hear, see here, I've got a really simple one here called basic HTTP. So if I have a look at this class, basic HTTP, basic HTTP, what it does is given a protocol, HTTP, a host, local host, and a port, I can then make requests on it. Now this isn't a normal HTTP abstraction in that this is built to support my existing tests. So you, you see this isn't an HTTP abstraction that says, do a get, do a post, do a put, because I've got other abstraction layers that do that. This one is, is written to make the tests easier and is growing with the tests. So the tests at the moment are simple ping tests and simple content tests. So that's what this does. Simple ping test is, is there a page at this path? So this is what it takes to use the HTTP URL connection. Basically make a, and create a, a URL, open the connection, cast it into an HTTP URL connection so that we can get the response and things like that. And that's pretty much it. This line here lets me check for status codes. So I can see if there's a 200, a 404, whether it's a, or redirects will get followed, but um, 200, 400s, 404s, 500 errors, this will pick those up. It gets a little bit more complicated when I want to do something like get the response body. So you can see here I've got an, a method called get response body that is an abstraction layer that looks complicated. It isn't really. What we basically do is we have to use an input stream reader because we have to read the input stream that's coming from that connection. So I create an input stream reader, put it in a buffered reader to make it easier to read. However, in the event of a 400, it doesn't come through in the input stream, it comes through in the error stream, which kind of makes sense, but it's HTTP. There's there's one message. Why have we split it into error or whatever? We just have. So we have to handle that. And what you'll find is that you build up an abstraction there based on the situations that you face. So a third party library like Rest Assured already handles all this stuff for you. So you go, I just want a big library bring it in. And the reason it's big is it handles every use case under the sun that you could possibly imagine for HTTP. A lot of the time I don't need that. And when I don't need that and when I want to keep it simple, that's when I end up using the HTTP URL connection because I'm gradually building up a tiny, from a tiny start points, just the code that I need to handle the use cases that I have in my test code. And this is pretty fast. It doesn't add any more dependencies on my project. Um, and you learn its uh, nuances and you cover them up with abstraction layers to make it easier for you. So very often what you'll find is I have code that I essentially just copy and paste between different test projects. I do need to pull that into a library, but you can see down here in this code base, I have abstraction layers to make it easier for me to send different header types out to me. This is a, this is a fairly standard abstraction layer. So it lets me do um, get, head, post, and put the body in. Then it has abstractions over the request so that I'm not actually dealing with um, input streams. I'm just dealing with strings and maps of headers. So over time you build this stuff up. But when you're starting, what you find is you write your tests, you write the code you need, then you write an abstraction layer around a simple HTTP method to make your code work. 
Now, because this is an abstraction layer and it's written at the level of the test, and that's important, this is written at the level of the test, this is what the test needs, this is the semantics of the test, this is a DSL to allow me to check is this page here, which is basically what I want to do in this test. The implementation of that is hidden. I could use a third party abstraction layer in here. If I want to bring in this type of code here that is more generic, I can use that under this abstraction layer. My test won't know, my test won't change. As far as the test is concerned, there's something that it says, does that page exist? It uses it. How it's implemented, the test doesn't care. So the test should never have to change even if I use a third party HTTP abstraction layer, I use an abstraction layer that I've built and um, eventually in Java 10, we move over to the HTTP client. The test doesn't care because there's an abstraction layer here that is built at its level. And so if I find that the more tests I write, the more the abstraction layer grows, I'm spending more time in the abstraction layer than I am writing the test, then I might be tempted to just go, all right, let's bite the bullet, let's get a third party library in. Let's convert our abstraction layers here to use the third party library. And then we don't have to code for any additional boundaries or use cases that we haven't thought of. If we have to do redirects and automatically follow them or do redirects and we don't want to automatically follow them, that library will just handle it for us. We want to do HTTPS, that library will just handle it for us. We want to ignore certificate errors, that library will just handle it for us. And we don't have to code for that kind of stuff. But at the moment, my tests are very simple. They run very fast. They run localhost as part of the build on an embedded server that is using this library. I don't need anything more than a simple HTTP connection. And that is why I chose the HTTP, HTTP URL connection at this point. You can find all this code on GitHub. Um, I'll stick some URLs in the description, or in fact, I'll put a link to a blog post that has the um, URLs in it. And you can have a look at it, but that is the main thought process I'm going through when I'm deciding do I use the built-in one, do I use rest assured. Very often if I'm working on a, an integration test project where I know that all I'm ever going to do is make requests on essentially a deployed application, then I'll probably use rest assured by default or a third party HTTP library because I know that there's going to be a lot of variability in the requests I make and it has to handle lots of variation in the environment, in the speeds. And it's that level of variation that I don't want to code for. So I'll use a third party library, which already handles that. And I think it's pretty much that that is the main deciding factor. Another deciding factor is I want to keep my code small, I want to minimize the dependencies, I want to minimize the semantic overload when we, as developers, come to the code base. Because if I bring in a third party library, you have to know that third party library. If I use the default Java ones, you pretty much expect it to know roughly how it works or how to find it or how to read the Java doc. And it shouldn't be an, an, like an overhead in terms of much learning. Third party libraries, people can go, oh, there's a lot of stuff to learn there. And there might be. So it's that avoidance. But if we're doing things strategically, then we're making decisions longer term how we're going to work. And if we make a strategic decision on a third party library, then people have to learn that. But chances are we're doing that because there's a lot of variation that we expect to handle. So basics, minimum, constrained, set, fast, we're getting up to speed, we're gonna grow and evolve based on our test case, but we'll still have an abstraction layer which protects us if we decide we get to the point where we now have enough complexity that we need a third party library.